In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to competency-based assessment in Moodle and specifically to the marking schema meets requirements or further evidence required. I have an example Moodle site here. I have some pre-existing assessments and I've also had some student activity occur. I'm going to focus my attention on three of the most common assessment tools. They are the assignments tool, discussion fora, and computer marked quizzes. If you're not familiar with the setup of these tools, I have separate screen recordings that you can view after this. I'll start with the assignment first showing you the settings that are applied. So I'm going to go to Edit and Edit Settings. Let me first draw your attention to the area that it talks about the grading method. From the selection list here, you'll note that I've chosen the option Further Evidence Required slash meets requirements. A consideration to make is whether or not you'll allow for resubmission. So for instance, if you grade a piece of work as re further evidence required, will you allow the student to resubmit? For that, I turn to the submission settings. If you wish to allow for resubmission, set the attempts reopened to manually. So now let's have a look at the marking of student work submitted to that assignment. If I click on the assignment title itself and go to view grade all submissions, I can see that there's a piece of work here awaiting my grading. I can click on the little grade icon, click on the student work to open that up and review it. And once I've established my marking, I can go back into Moodle, scroll down and record my grade. So in this example, I'm going to set it as further evidence required. I should now give feedback to my students about what further evidence I might expect from them. I also want my student to resubmit, so I'm going to choose yes from allow another attempt. And then I'm going to scroll down and hit save changes. Let's now look at the discussion forum. Again, I'll go to Edit and Edit Settings. But this time I'm going to look under a section entitled Ratings. Now you'll note that what I've done is to set the aggregate type to Maximum Rating and the scale to Meets Requirements, Further Evidence Required. So let's have a look at what that now looks like when we go to Grade student discussion posts. If I click on the title itself, I can see, a, for example, student submission here, and I can use the inbuilt rating schema to grade that. So I'm going to grade that as meets requirements. Finally, we'll look at our quiz. Now, a quiz is more problematic in as far as the individual quiz questions are always out of a numerical value. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I click on the quiz and then go to Edit Quiz, I can see the individual questions listed here. You'll see that they're out of a point value. And I've also adjusted the maximum grade up to 100. That will, in essence, standardise the marks up to 100%, which I find easier later on as I'm processing them. If you have any questions that don't contribute to the overall meeting of requirements for this unit of competency, I recommend that you set those points value to zero so that they don't skew your final marks. With that now done, I can turn my attention to the quiz settings. So I'm going from the administration tab into edit settings. And I'll draw your attention to some key features here. The first is in the review options. What we're intending to do here is disguise the numerical mark. We don't want that displayed to our students. And we can turn that off by simply taking the tick away from the marks fields here. In addition, I've allowed in my quiz multiple attempts, so I've taken away the right answer tick as I don't want to give the correct answer to students for subsequent attempts.
finally we need to go to this overall feedback section and this is where we translate the numerical value into either meets requirements or further evidence required. So what we're doing here is setting out in essence a range of values. In this case I've set the range between 100% and almost 100%, 99.99%. If students fall within that range they have successfully met their requirements. Any value lower than that and the feedback is further evidence required. So I'll cancel out of this and show you now a student submission. I'm going to click on the attempts and scroll down. I see that there's a number of attempts here and if I click onto one of them I can see that they were given a grade of 100 marks but more importantly the feedback that arrived to students was meets requirements. So let's conclude this tutorial by looking at the grades that have been accumulating. I'm going to go into the grades area where I can see the various individual assessment pieces and the results that have been accumulating along the way from my students. Now for many of us Moodle forms part but not all of our overall delivery strategy for a particular unit of competency. You're likely to have other forms of evidence that, such as class-based assessments and other offline activities that will contribute to the overall assessment for this unit. Once you have consolidated that information, you can use it to record your final assessment in Markbook. The attached guides provided below the tutorial will assist you in this. And recall that there are further recordings to show detailed instructions around assignments, discussions and quizzes available separately.